although I'm down for chairing this whole afternoon session, I'm afraid I'm just going to disappear off after introducing the next speaker after me and hand over to my deputy chair um, because I've got to go to um, a GP strategy group conference call with the uh, what a friend of mine in GPC used to call the high hegens at uh, NHS England. Just to introduce myself for those who, who don't know me, uh, my name is Peter Spinyard, uh, and that's not difficult to work out. And as well as being chairman of the Family Doctor Association, a privilege I've had for about uh, three and a half years now, uh, I'm also a full-time GP in Swindon, where I've worked since 1985. And uh, when I introduce other speakers, I always like to introduce a fascinating fact. Um, well, how about this one? I played tuba in a military band at the Royal Tournament in 1971. There we are, fascinating fact. Now, GP federations. Is this where we're going to be, I wonder? So, let's just have a think. What I want to do with this session is to have it reasonably interactive. The problem with this room for interactive sessions is the acoustics are ghastly. We tend to get drowned out by the long-term conditions uh, droning on and on for a long term next door. Um, and the occasional jet flying over and missing us by a few hundred feet. So if you want to interrupt, please feel free to heckle, but we might have to call for the roving mic to be able to hear your heckle. Um, so let's have a think about what a federation is. And our chief exec very helpfully dug out the thesaurus definition of a federation. I've taken out one or two of the sillier ones, but which of those do you think fits GPs? Well. I thought those did quite well. But you've actually got to work out what a GP is before you do this. And I always define a GP as a fully qualified doctor with a personality disorder. And a GP who has been single-handed, and I have been single-handed in the past, as a GP with a serious personality disorder. So we can work on from there. There we are. We've got long-term conditions taking over already. So. Why should our practice look at federating and what do we mean by federation? There are some people in government and some people who think they ought to be in government who think that bigger is better um, and think that smaller practices don't cut the mustard and can't do the job. And if anyone else thinks that in here, long-term conditions is next door if you want to go and join them. There is pressure isn't there, to provide more and more for our patients for less and less in primary care. And is there actually, is there a supply of really good managers to have enough good, great managers to provide one for every general practice in the country? Not for the money we pay, there isn't. And talking of money, the financial pressures. In times of plenty, perhaps in 2005, 2006, when we were going through the the good times in general practice, when Quaff was actually delivering some really good improvements in the care of our population and in the care of our bank balances as a corollary, then perhaps we could afford to be a little generous with our resources. And indeed, in the early days of Quaff, we had a profit share in our practice. And when the achievement payment came through, we would divide it among the staff in proportion to how well they'd be working and helping us in the last year. And we were delighted to do so. Nowadays, it's part of our core funding. And without COF, as Gavin Jamie said this morning, we wouldn't have enough funding to keep the doors open. COF was always meant to be optional, 2004. I remember I was on GPC at the time. It ain't, is it? You either do it or you don't have enough finances to survive, and you'll probably get taken to pieces by um, the successors to PCTs, the local area teams and the CQC, and goodness knows who else who inspects us nowadays for not providing an adequate quality of care. I sometimes talk in, in my pastoral role as chairman of the Family Doctor Association to GPs who like to continue the old-fashioned general practice of caring for their patients and not ticking the boxes and doing quaff. And they're hounded out of existence, there's no doubt about it. Whether that's right or not, you can judge. So why do you think we should federate? What's, what's there in it for us? <coughs> do you think we should do it to share the load? Well, that's a, a very good motivator, isn't it? 
are we working too hard? Well, I think we're working very hard in general practice. Now, I don't know any full-time GPs who do less than a 10-hour working day in, on their days in practice. If anyone in general practice can work out a way of doing less than a 10-hour working day, will you please tell me I'm up for it? The government, of course, thinks we sit around doing nothing, playing with ourselves, out on the golf course. How many of you in here played golf during the working day? 1985, when I came into practice, we used to start at 8.30 in the morning. We used to see patients every five minutes because we didn't have quaff to do. We didn't care for long-term conditions so well. Every five minutes, we'd see a patient. 11.30, we'd have a coffee together and divide up the visits. We'd do four visits each and go home. And then we were free until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We had nothing to do. There was no paperwork. There were no targets to meet. There were no meetings to go to. There was no umbilicus to inspect co co uh, collectively. We went home and we had three hours off. I used to run a second-hand car business. Other people went and played golf. I don't know any GPs who have time to do any of those things these days. We have, as those of you in here earlier on this morning heard, a doubling of patient demand between the years 2000 and 2010. And in some age groups, a trebling of patient demand. The actual consultation rate in my practice has gone up since I founded the practice in 1995 from 3.9 consultations per patient per year to just under 10 consultations per patient per year. Our resources have not gone up. We certainly haven't had a doubling of the resources for doctor time. The bureaucracy, well, I don't need to tell you, do I? How much time do you spend doing the bureaucratic nonsense that is infesting our practices? I very fortunately just managed to take a new partner on in my practice after 15 months of trying to recruit. He joined us on Monday this week. My practice manager had to fill out the CQC form to accept him as a new partner. How many of you know how many pages that form has in it? Anyone know? 28 pages. And that is just to have him joining the partnership from CQC point of view. And of course they're charging us £650 as well for the privilege of remaining registered with them. So there's a lot of burnout among GPs and senior staff in the practice. We're actually running out of steam and more and more doctors of my age group are retiring either because they financially can get out and want to or because they have burnt out, run out of steam, gone down with a serious depressive illness and retired sick. What a terrible way to treat a workforce. We've got to do something about it. Future threats. Here's just a few I thought of. Loss of patients to other practices. Loss of commission services. Your leses and deses, certainly the leses, are not safe. The money which we kind of relied on coming in for doing various local enhanced services is now in someone else's pot, and they may decide to fire the money to someone else altogether. I've just mentioned the cost of CQC registration, and it's a personal hobby horse. I really rather objected to writing that check for £650 odd, because I don't think it'll save a single life or do any good whatever in our practice. Revalidation, yeah, staff costs, well, most of us in practice have a ridiculous habit of paying our staff properly, and of course every penny we pay our staff is a penny we haven't got for ourselves, so that's okay up to a point. No one admits there's going to be GMS3, but you bet your bottom dollar there is. And if you want me to put timing on it, we will have GMS3 by the next uh, general election. Not, of course, that politics has anything to do with medicine at all. So anyway, how are we going to survive? Do you think we should start working with neighboring practices? And whether you call it a federation, a close working agreement, a rotor share, whatever you choose to call it, we have to work together with our neighboring practices. We can't work as an island anymore. We need to share our resources and our skills and our brain power and our personnel with neighboring practices. So which way would you go about doing that? That's a genuine road sign somewhere in America. But that feels like general practice just now, doesn't it? No left turns, no right turns, or is this politics? I don't know. No going back, no going forward. Stop, you're the wrong, going the wrong way, don't enter. Yeah, that's general practice in a nutshell. 
But people say to me, why would I want to federate? I don't like the idea. I don't want to be part of a Tesco's type practice with the same front door as everyone else's. I want my practice to stay independent and to do what it's always done. I like working at my practice because it's got a feel about it that's special. Anyway, I can't work with that lot next door. You know, we just don't get on. Um, whatever the attitude is, perhaps we just don't get on with our neighboring practices. And with various changes in the health service, we've all been lumbered into localities, kicking and screaming in some circumstances in the recent past. And it may be we just don't get on with our neighboring practices. But, you know, the outcome of federation is not always uniformity. I picked these pictures off the press website for the manufacturers last Sunday when I was writing this talk. All of those cars, and they're all fairly recent models, the Volkswagen Golf Estate, the Seat Leon, the Audi A3, and the Skoda Octavia, they all look very different. They're all made by different car companies, aren't they? Well, no, actually, they're not. They're all made by companies in the Volkswagen uh, Automobil Gesellschaft group. Um, they're all based on the same chassis. They all have the same engines. They all have the same transmissions and gearboxes and suspension systems. The tuning of the suspension systems is different, and the front door looks different, but they're actually all the same car underneath. From the workman Skoda Octavia, uh, source of many minicab rides, to the upmarket Audi A3, and how Volkswagen must be laughing when they charge twice as much for an A3 as a Skoda. But they're all the same underneath, and we can do the same in general practices. Now, actually, You've got to work with practices that you get on with and you like and which do similar things to you. You may not want to work with a practice whose idea of good practice is to shut the doors for half the day and just let people buy their placebos. There was a practice not far away from me, um, which has since been shut down, where it was well known by patients that if you wanted your antibiotics or your sick note, you went in to see that doctor, but if you wanted an opinion, you went to the walk-in centre or casualty. Um, you may not want to work with a practice which has a waiting room which looks like that. That is an NHS waiting room, genuine picture. You might want to practice with a practice which looks like that, which actually looks after its patients. Anyone guess where that practice is? Gavin knows. Yeah, it's my practice. And why shouldn't you have an air conditioner on the wall to keep your patients cool, a water dispenser for patients to have a drink, and something for the kids to do while they're waiting, and a comfy chair to do it in? It doesn't cost a lot of money, but it does make it a much nicer environment for patients. So, what are the nuts and bolts of this federation thing? There are really three levels, aren't there? One is the simple thing, which I think none of us are going to have a real problem with as we go forward and that's sharing the backroom administration, perhaps a bookkeeper, or someone to do the typing, or someone to do the filing. Can be sharing staff, perhaps across practices. Slightly harder to do, you've got to, the contractual issues, you've got to make sure that you have perhaps a lead practice for the employment, which sells the services to its friendly practices, um, and you have to have an agreement that if a member of staff who's actually employed by you but shared among other practices is told off by the other practices or does something bad there then the way in which the employment is handled doesn't land you in the soup with an employment tribunal so there needs to be a little bit more care with that and a legal agreement backing it up and the third level of course is when you get towards amalgamation when you're sharing premises and sharing facilities you can still have your own front door and your own appearance but you might want to be sharing doctors and you might want to be sharing your surgery premises slightly harder those of you who work in health center practices may be used to that already some of us are not some of us like our own front doors so where are you going to start well if you don't start where you're comfortable you'll not end up where you're comfortable so start by talking to your chums we all know some neighboring practices that think much the same as we do. Um, I know who the cynics are in general practice in Swindon and who are the bad boys and who actually, when a PCT in the past has said jump, 
instead of saying, yes, sir, how high, sir, thank you very much, sir, actually say, what, where, why? Show me the regulation you were relying on to tell me that I need to jump here. That's the sort of guys I work with. They might actually be thinking about it too and haven't told you in the same way as you haven't told them. So why not get together over a glass of wine and a pizza one evening and just see if you've got common ground to move forward. The more informal it is to start with, the more chance you end up of having something really good which lasts. It's got to feel right. You can't just impose this change on other people. It's got to feel right within your practice before you approach anyone else. It's got to feel right in terms of where you start this federating game. You must seek appropriate advice. For goodness sake, don't start agreeing to share costs, staff, services without things being backed up by a legal agreement. You wouldn't have a partnership without a proper partnership agreement, at least you wouldn't have got any sense at all. Likewise, with federations, you need a proper federation agreement. And I would strongly suggest that you approach a firm of solicitors which actually knows what it's doing. I'm not doing a free commercial here, but our uh, federation leaflet, which is available on the FDA stand, I'll talk about it in a minute, um, was written by Andrew lockhart Marums from Lockhart Solicitors in London, specialist medical solicitor, knows what he's up to understands and gets general practice. There are other firms of solicitors who also understand and get general practice. Use one. JFDI, just do it. I'll leave the F to your imagination. Now, that's how the Victorians made Britain great. This may be perilous, excellent, wonderful. It's perilous, good, let's just do it, shall we? Yeah. Well, that's what Federation feels like to start with. You think, this is really out of my comfort zone. Talking to Dr. Bloggs down the road, oh, I don't know, you know. I had a patient who said they were no good. Yeah, you had 10 patients who said they really were quite good. Um, how many of your patients do you think say, you're rubbish when they go and see another doctor? I know a lot of my patients probably do. So, I'm not gonna witter on for ages, so I'd like to hear what you have to say. Um, the first of our Federation practice of uh, GP practices fact sheets is available on the FDA stand. Uh, it's free. How about that? You're not even going to get charged for it. You don't even have to be a member of the FDA, though obviously I'd rather you were. And you can get that from there. And now let's open the session to the floor. I do have difficulty, I'm sorry I'm chairing myself as well as talking, but I have difficulty, I've got the light straight in my eyes, but do wave at me and I'll try and get the microphone to you. Sorry, can we have the microphone down the front, please? Quick, quick. Down front here, I'm pointing to him. Are there any examples of successful GP federations and what key deliverables have they actually achieved? Yeah, good question. Um, yes, there are lots around the country and a lot don't actually call themselves federations. They call themselves cooperatives. They share rotors, they do all sorts of things. Um, if you look at a practice which works effectively as a federation, you need look no further than Lawrence Buckman's practice in North London, where he is a single-handed GP in a building which has four small single-handed practices. And they share staff and they share backroom functions, but actually each practice is separate and individual and works separately. So that actually genuinely works and has done for some long number of years. Yeah. So when, when I was looking at the GP Federation model, my feeling was this was going to be about GP plus. So actually expanding the role of the general practitioner, not just providing current general practice, but in a more comfortable way. Okay. So are there, are there models out there that actually have, are I, where I people have know. taken on more provision? Probably so. Um, but. I, I'm not specifically aware of any, just behind you. Um, I think what I'm really at is that what we need to do is start from where we are. And if you start from where you are and let things build in an organic fashion, you're much more likely to get an output and result that works. If you try and bang in and say, right, we've got seven practices in this town, we've got to federate together, we've got to be able to provide services, we've got to be an any qualified provider for everything, we've got to chase 
targets and chase contracts, it's not going to last. It's got to grow organically. GPs are singularly bloody-minded individuals, at least I am, and um, telling us what to do doesn't work. If you show me something that works or show me something that could work and show me something that's going to make my staff happier, my patients happier and my partners happier, I'm up for it. But if you just say you've got to join up, the barriers go up. Hello, I'm Karen Stubbs. I'm from um, First for Health. We're a group of federated practices. We're working in Newham. And just in answer to your question, um, we are looking at both um, supporting individual practices to maintain their individuality and provide core general practice, but we're also working with them to provide practice plus, if you like, and support for delivering both DES and LES requirements that are really quite onerous for some single-handed GPs. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to hold the mic, but there are some good examples, and I think Newer no, is it. one of them. Go for it. Well, I, I mean, one of the things that we're really focusing on is um, creating succession plans for retiring GPs and also um, recruitment plans and innovative careers for salary GPs within Newham that enable us to retain the workforce. We're also looking at non-clinical workforce and education and training. So lo lots, a long list of things that we're trying to do, but um, we've got a can, group can I of just nine ask, practices. Do you have a difficulty with recruitment of salary doctors in Newham? We or do, do you have yeah. plenty of people coming along? No, saying, we do have a difficulty, not so much in recruiting, but retaining them. So you can recruit? We can. You see, in some parts of the country, you can't recruit at all. Mainly it's, our it's, recruitment has been through our VTS. We've got a very good VTS register yeah. program. Most That's of our helped. VTS people go off and do locums because they can make more money. Mm. Anyway. Our, our best GP trainee, we offered her a job and she said, I can earn far more working far less hard as a locum. Uh, so thank you for the offer, but no thank you. And that's why we're trying to create really good career plans that involve not just nine hours of clinical work, but it, you know, involve CPD, specialist roles, and support for appraisal and uh, revalidation. So I'm Karen Stubbs. I'm at First for Health, Newham, if anybody's interested in talking to me afterwards. Thanks for the advert and well worth having. <laughs> so, front row here. Afternoon, I'm a GP from Mansfield and I'm an exec board member for Mansfield Astro CCGA. We use the federated the model in slightly different way. We've actually a 31 practice uh, CCG and we've divided ourselves roughly about 40, 45,000 patients, five, six practices together and formed a federated group. But the federated group is not legally binding as you recommend. What we've done with that federated group is we've collaborated together to say, for example, have a streamlined referral pathway. So we've designed ourselves um, uh, referral guidelines for different conditions. We use those uh, rigorously in our federated group and we have a minimum data set before we refer. And instead of, and we've, just, we've looked at the fact that uh, using the backroom staff, we've looked at GP, instead of having a locum, you could be on a unit to do locum for the others, while if you did, say, 10 units of locum, they could repay you back 10 units at the later date. So we've, instead of looking at uh, joining legal hips together and making people forced to join you, we've looked at slightly more achievable targets and we've been quite successful so far. The federated, the federated group have elected a chair to sit on the exec board of the CCG who acts as a go between the five practices and the CCG. So it works very well in Mansfield Ashfield. And that's another model to look at. So that's actually working as localities within a CCG. Kind working, of, but we call them Working in a very cooperative fashion within yes. the localities. Yes. If it works for your practices, are there any practices which butt out and say, not working with them just because they happen to be neighbors. No, but what we've done is we've got an inter-practice agreement to join everybody together to sign up to. So every practice and every GP in the practice, not just the lead GP, every GP in the locality has to sign that inter-practice agreement. And what's the sanction if they don't? Well, then there are level of sanctions from CCG, which uh, first it would be more of a support rather than a sanction, but it can be escalated to the third level. Why? Well, because if to function, if, if there are, in my federated group, there are five practices, if one practice decides to just refer at the first instance, 
and the referral rates certainly skyrocket, which there is no rhyme or reason for. And other four practices conform to the guidelines and do the referral appropriately with minimum data set. Then that practice needs to held account for for falling out of line, and there's got to be some way of managing that. And instead of a stick, we've decided to use a carrot first. But then there are levels of uh, engagement. If the if the practice doesn't engage, then there are levels which can be escalated. I would have to say this doesn't sound like a federation of the willing. It sounds like a federation of the driven. In a way, it is. But yeah. we, we've had 95 percent. Uh, practices which are all for it, all positive for it, and it's working for now. Any other hands waving around? I can't see very easily, as I said. Someone at the back there. At the back, about second row. Oh, you were waving away. I, I couldn't see you. Hi, just two very quick points for me. One was just to have your take on the High Court ruling in 2010 which set a precedent with regards to unilateral termination of PMS contracts and what the future holds for, for practices whereby with a tightening financial budget we're expected to deliver the same or more and with local area teams looking to performance monitor and manage practices, our, are our contracts now at risk if we're unable to maintain the level of service which we're expecting from us? Um, that was the first point. And the second point with regards to federated models is that in West Yorkshire we're looking at uh, setting up a provider arm for all, 31, for all our 31 practices in order to allow them to compete on a level playing field with other providers and bid for services within our local area. And that's just an example of a federated model we've taken, <laughs> taken on board. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm just going to hear from the lady at the back there and then I'm going to wind up the session. Hi, Val Hempstead, Practice Manager, and Gates said, and then he's CCG Exec Board Member. We have sort of two types of practices working together. One is the social enterprise provider led for services type model, which provides locums, provides all sorts of different services type thing, and inter practice referrals for practices who can't do certain enhanced services but also within the area we have a cross tain alliance with the two Newcastle CCGs so you have uh, sort of three CCGs working as a federation on different sorts of things um, and some of it's services but some of it is backroom stuff and sharing management sharing um, different services or sharing leads on clinical areas um, and it's been very very successful Great. very successful thank you for that I, I mean I think it those sort of models that we've heard from different areas, they have to suit the GPs in that area. And goodness knows there are enough different models of practice in general practice that if the things feel right and feel comfortable, it's not a bad idea to go ahead with it. As long as you're flexible enough to have a look back and see if it ain't working, fix it, rather than just go along saying, well, it isn't working, but we're stuck with it. So anyway, I'm running out of time. And thank you all very much for your attention. Uh, we've got another session starting in here in about five minutes. Thank you all very much indeed.